money's not everything. It's really not. And money can't make you happy. It, money don't make you happy. I know a lot of miserable people with money. It's not money that makes you happy. It, it don't. It don't make you happy, but it'll park you right in front of Happy's house. And you can at least see if to stay there. Uh, I recommend money. I highly recommend it. Uh, and anybody that told you that money different about money is because they don't have money. But you got to quit listening to people that ain't got money tell you about money. Money, the root of all evil and all that. You do evil stuff with money, but if you're a good person, you can do good stuff with money. You know, people say that money changes people. It really doesn't. You know what I learned about money? Money don't change people. Money allows you to be more of who you really are. See, if you're a kind person, when you get a lot of money, you become a kinder person. If you're an asshole, when you get a lot of money, you become a big asshole. It's money, it allows you to amplify whoever you really are. That's why when you see rich people acting like it's because they always been one. They always been one. They just didn't have the money to flex on to show it to you. That's all it is. But you let that get some money. They finna show your something. And that's it. If you see a person that's cool with money, it's because they always been cool. That's what I recommend money. But it's 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 so. All right. I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to. I don't know. I was going to show you a real simple thing. I figured out more the time. Before I go to damn shit, I'm going to show you a simple way to become a millionaire. Very <laughs> well, come on. Michelle, what you got, Steve? No. Well, I'm going to show you. It's a really simple way. And it's so true. It's very simple. You just have to understand that it's possible for you. What stops most people from becoming successful is you have something in you that tells you it's not for you. But it's for everybody who wants it. God will give you the desires of your heart. He God, he love you. If you ask your child, if your child asks you for the latest sneaker, you're going to try to get it for him. If he at the school trying to make a field trip, you're going to try to send it. If he need a computer for a class, you're going to try to get this computer for your child. Because he your child. Well, we all got the same heavenly father. We his children. When you ask him for something, you don't think he want to give it to you? But you have not because you ask not. Most people don't even ask God for the right stuff. Keep wasting God's time with all these little bitty requests. You're talking to God. Why you keep going to God with this little stuff? Lord, help me make my rent. Don't he always? Why don't you ask for a mortgage? You're talking to God, man. This is the same dude that made heaven and earth in six days. How he can't give you a house? How he can't give you a new car? Quit looking on Craigslist for a used car. Go to the new car section. You're talking to God. You quit asking God for little stuff. God don't care about no used car. You want a used car, he give you a used car. Ask for a new car. You gonna ask God for five hundred dollars? Might as well ask him for fifty grand. I mean, since you ask him, you have not cause you ask not. I, it's really so. I'm telling you, man, I, I figured it out. It, it ain't. I ain't smart. I ain't got no education. I ain't got no degree of any kind whatsoever. Graduated with a high school diploma. Graduating class with 695 people. I graduated 690. And every time I saw them five people that were behind me, I let them know. All of you have targets, things that you're after. If you're going to get a new result, if you're going to grow your business, if you're going to be able to support your mom, if you're going to get rid of the anxiety, if you're going to be able to overachieve and not have all that fear inside of you, you obviously need to get a new result. You're going to have to get new action. We all know that. You don't get new results with old actions doing the same thing. What human beings can do, this is a human being, believe it or not, I majored in art. What human beings can do is amazing. What they will do is usually disappointing. It's not because we're not capable of it. It's because we don't have new actions because we get in certain emotional states that dominate us, like anxiety, like fear of failure, right? Like the fear of the loss of your mother as an example. So if you're in a state of fear, you're going to behave very differently and get very different results. That's what that means right there. <laughs> then if you were in a place of being courageous or bold or warm or connected or playful, any of those, 
So the most important key to changing your life in any situation is to change results, you got to change behavior. But to change behavior, you got to change the emotional state you're in. Now, how do you do that when you don't feel like it, right? Or it feels overwhelming. There are two ways, and I've done this with the greatest athletes in the world. I've done this with four different presidents of the United States. I've done it with billionaire clients. All you have to do to change your state, there's certain things you got to do physically so you're strong enough to remember the truth. Because remember, fear is physical. You feel your throat or your gut. So is courage. Courage doesn't mean you're not afraid. It just means you're strong enough you push through in spite of the fear, right? And courage feels different in the body. So when you go lift or you go for a sprint or a strong run or you jump in that freezing water, when you push your mind to go beyond what's comfortable, you feel a strength inside you, and that strength will help you to change your body, your emotions, your relationships, whatever. But then the other thing I say is model someone who's successful. Don't just do this sh- by trial and error. Okay? Find somebody who has what you want, Ideally, maybe more than one person, two or three, and figure out what are they doing different than you in their relationship? What do they believe different than you about relationship? If it's their body, what are they doing different? They're not lucky. They're doing things differently. You might be slightly biochemically different, but there's patterns there that you can see. And so instead of learning by trial and error, which can take decades, you may never learn, Jim Rohn taught me success leaves clues, man. Find someone's got what you want, study what they do, every aspect of it, and then add yourself to it. And that's the pathway to speed of transformation. So now, like, you know, I've done it. I'm not the only person. There's so many companies that went from worse off than they'd ever been in their history to the best off because they found a way to pivot. But that required a psychological piece of not blame. So maybe it's time for you to think for yourself and model what works instead of just what you're told. That's something to consider for yourself. See, someone will tell you your whole life you're a piece of crap, and there's part of you go, you're full of it, I'm going to show you. Lots of people have done that. They never bought it. Or someone tell you you're beautiful your whole life, you go, I'm not really beautiful. So what people tell you doesn't matter at all. It's what you stack. It's what you assemble. It's what you create. It's the habit of what you put in your head. And today, I don't blame you because we got a whole culture that's always blaming somebody else for something in their life. But blame is not a strategy for pride. That's why you listen to these blaming people. They're all angry all the time. Listen, if I want to blame, I grew up in an environment. I didn't even share it to my mom past, and even then I didn't share. I grew up in a pretty rough environment. My mom was a beautiful soul, but when she drank alcohol and she mixed it with prescription drugs, it was a different creature, and it was a violent creature. And I have a younger brother five years younger and a younger sister seven years younger. And my mom would get nuts. And I didn't want them to get hurt. So I was 5'1 in high school. She grabbed me by the hair and smashed me against the wall till I bled. Now, I never shared this, and I'm not uh, denigrating her in any way. I only shared it like four or five years after she died um, because I was talking to a group of kids in New York City, um, all without fathers, um, 80% African American, about uh, 20% Hispanic out of their group roughly, no white kids. And I'm talking about your biography is not your destiny. And it doesn't matter what you've been through. What you decide now is what's going to control your life. What you decide each day going forward is going to decide your life. And I look at them seeing me. I can read their minds. This big, tall, white, rich guy is going to tell me my argument doesn't matter. So I said, you know, let me tell you my story. And I told them the whole story, way more than I'm telling you. And every one of them was crying their eyes out when they are done. I said, look where I am right now. Because I wouldn't assemble the story that my past equals my future. The past only equals your future if you live there. Many years ago, I read a book by Terry Cole Whitaker. It was a classic. What you think of me is none of my business. Think of the amount of time that is wasted on negative energy, wondering what other people think of you. What they think of you really doesn't make any difference. It's what you think of you that makes the difference. So as you go through the day, don't worry about what other people think of you. Just say, I'm all right. I'm God's highest form of creation. The first is that you should aim at the highest good that you can imagine. And that would be a good that includes everyone, right? So if I wanted what was good for you, say, if I genuinely wanted it, I want it in a way that was good for you now and good in the long run and good for you and your family and your community and maybe good for me too. You know, you could conceive of that as the desire. And I think that's a good definition of love is that you actually want the best, you want the best possible outcome. And in the Gospels, of course, that's extended even to your enemies. Yes. Right? Is that, okay, if we're going to have things good, let's have it good enough for even the people that set themselves up against me. Because if the world was running properly, things would be good for them too. And that would be better. 
And it seems to me that that's a very good way of looking at things. It's a difficult way of looking at things. And then the second part of the Sermon on the Mount is something like having established that as your aim, which is no easy thing, by the way, right? Because you have to be pretty clear-headed and single-minded to actually want that to be your aim. Then you can concentrate on the day and you can try telling the truth. And you can ally. So there's truth and love that are allied together. Truth, love, and attention. It's something like that that are all allied together. How many of you would like to be more creative? Let me let me see your hands, okay? How many of you would like to uh, just absolutely uh, have an imagination that just took you to a new level? You know what I'm saying? Okay. H- how many of you already have that because you're on drugs? Okay. 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 Well, here, here, here's, here, here's, the, here's the key. This will work for you. I promise you it will work for you because it worked for me. I made a major change in my early 30s from just having answers and being a leader that just had to cast vision, show everybody what I was doing and where we were going. And I started asking intentional questions. And I became a person. I ask questions all the time. Every day, I ask questions. And I have found just asking questions will take you on exciting journeys more than anything else. You're very, you excel in that, Ken. I've watched you over the years. You'd excel really in that. But for my early years, I didn't ask enough questions. And so, therefore, I didn't get enough ideas and thoughts from others. So when people say, I want to be more creative, what's step one? Step number one is ask more questions. Just go to people and start asking questions. It's amazing what you'll learn. It's truly a scientific fact that when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And now you take this tiny little subatomic particle and you take it and you put it in a particle accelerator and you rev up the, uh, the speed of these things and collide them at 250,000 miles per hour. You collide them, you open up the particle accelerator looking for your source and guess what's in there? Nothing. No thing. That the dot that began you originated from a field of energy that has no boundaries, no beginnings, no ends. It's infinite. It's an infinite potential. And the question that I have for you is, if you can get this, that you didn't begin with that particle because particles themselves do not create more particles. St. Paul put it this way in the New Testament, that which is seen hath not come from that which doth appear. They talked a little strange in those days, right? What that means is that everything that we see in the material world doesn't originate in the material world. It's the spirit that gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. If the shape of your eye can be in an energy field that has no boundaries, no form, no materialness to it, why not the shape of your life? Why not the everything that you are destined to become why can't that be a part of this energy field as well that you showed up here from a field that i call intention and that beautiful globe that is here to my left to your right is what i am going to call for the rest of this program i am going to call this the source from which we all originated that every particle that shows up on this planet, and that's what Max Planck said, and that's what Carlos Castaneda said, and that's what every metaphysician said, that's what all of the great spiritual teachings on this planet say, that our source is spirit. It is something other than the physical. And if you had a set of magical binoculars, and you could look at that field, 